Hello Enchanted Ones and welcome to this DIY Yule Decoration video. Today, join me as I transform my bare tree into this beautiful enchanted Yule tree, full of astonishing information about the origins of many traditions we use today. So sit back, relax and keep on watching. Hello Enchanted Ones and welcome to this Yule Tree DIY video. I am out in the woods today and I'm actually foraging items for my Yule Tree. Since I've been doing more and more research into a Yule Tree, I've become really fascinated with it. Everything's just started to make so much more sense as to why we do this as to why people brought trees into their home. I'm just going to skip the bit where I'm just amazed by everything and just tell you everything. <laughs> as you know, a fir tree is an evergreen. When pagans decided to put it into their home, it's because it was the one last remaining tree that didn't have their leaves shed. It was seen as a tree of protection. And not only that, the pine needles from the fir tree are actually used to preserve, I think this was in caveman times, but they were used to preserve foods over the winter, which I'm very fascinated by. It's just such a hardy tree. And that's the first thing. But the second thing is the shape of the evergreen tree. It is a cone shape, so it points upwards. And of course, what was the most important thing to do with Yule? It was the return of the sun and the winter solstice. So having emblems and symbols, fruits that look like the sun, was a very common thing to put on the tree. So I actually started my preparations for the tree on Friday because it wasn't actually a very nice day to go foraging. So I decided to make some of the decorations there. And of course these decorations were in honour of the sun. So, I already had one of the most important features on my tree already, lights. Although before electricity, trees used to be adorned with candles to honour the sun, the moon and the stars. For my first decorations, I used salt dough. Salt dough is a great way to craft any shape you'd like and can last for years and years. So I started off by making a stencil. I drew around a small circular object and then added fiery points in a quirky style and I cut this out using a craft knife. I also made a small star as well. And then it was time to make the dough. And it really is so easy to make. I simply added one cup of plain flour to the bowl, added half a cup of salt. The recipe said table salt, but of course, being me, I only have Himalayan salt. But grinding it up worked just as well. I also added one teaspoon of cinnamon to enhance the cookie's smell and protection qualities and then one cup of water. I simply mixed this together until it formed a dough. I then began rolling it out, making sure it was around half a centimetre thick before I started cutting out my shapes. I then placed on my stencil and cut around it using the craft knife and found it was easier to drag the dough away from the symbol before taking it out. Then I gave the sun a face. I pressed two eye sockets into the face and then placed it onto a lined baking tray. making sure to make a hole for the string. I used a skewer for this. I also cut out many star shapes. These will represent the stars, the bright lights on the darkest night, but also the pentacle that symbolizes the elements and gives us protection. 
This whole process was very therapeutic and the dough was so easy to work with and manipulate. Once I had cut out all my shapes, I placed them in an oven on its lowest temperature. They took a little while, I'm not gonna lie, but it was all worth it in the end. I kept checking on them, turning them over, and it seemed like the stars dried out first. I really liked the white color of the dough. White symbolizes the pure air, the winter crisp, and the return of the light. When the sun's dried out, I decided to spray paint them gold. Gold again symbolizes the sun and the warmth it brings us. I then painted faces on the suns using black acrylic. I wanted to make them look cheerful and happy, although the last one I painted looked a little judgy. <laughs> You can make salt dough decorations, or if you prefer, you can use dried oranges. I always add a sprinkle of cinnamon before drying out my orange. And you guessed it, the orange symbolizes the sun, and it even looks like it with its beautiful pattern. It can also aid us with health and inner strength. I strung these up with gold thread, and to furthermore add to their beauty, I decided to glue onto them star anise. Star anise is known for its protection against the evil eye can bring good luck and a clear cleansed atmosphere at home. The power of the orange plus the star anise will magnify its good luck qualities so feel free to make a wish upon this over Yule. I was so happy with my creations, I already had three decorations made that were so simple but now it is time to join me once again in the forest. So making everything that was symbolized to the sun was such a fun idea and honestly it was so easy everything i did was just completely stress-free and i would highly recommend all of them but now we are back in the woods i've got a few things on my shopping list that i need to find today because not only did they celebrate the return of the sun but they celebrated all things green that was in the forest and today i've come to the healing trail and if you know anything about the healing trail it is that there are tons of evergreen things here so we've got ivy holly and also Fur. But I really want to find some holly with some berries. The pagans saw the berries of the holly as a symbol of reborn, rebirth, and they also saw it as a symbol of protection too, much like all of the things that I'm gathering. But yeah, let's get gathering. Some beautiful holly berries. Yay! They're so beautiful. The last thing I need to find now is some ivy, and it is known to be protective because of its binding, bounding qualities as it just attaches itself and grows in a very protective nature.
Hello Enchanted Ones, it is time to craft with the items I've got in the wood. I am going to put the items into little clear balls. I found something really interesting about ball balls. Pagans didn't see these as a classic ball ball, they actually saw them as a witch ball. A witch ball is basically something that will attract negative spirits. Because the 21st of December and the winter solstice was such a dark day, who knows what negative energy and bad spirits were lurking around. So they covered the tree in ball shaped ornaments that looked like orbs to actually attract these negative spirits. They would put gold ribbon, they would put beautiful pictures onto the ball balls so they would kind of be attracted to it like a moth to a flame. They would go inside the ball and uh, they would be free from their home. So I thought that was such an interesting piece of information because it's honestly why we have ball balls on our trees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put everything out on the table and we're going to have a little crafting session and to kind of just make little scenes inside of these baubles to go on the tree from the nature but also some spices and crystals and things like that. So let's begin crafting. I set everything up on the table and decided that this would be a fun activity to do as a pair. Taking one bauble at a time, we made a story in each one, from each evergreen. It was so therapeutic and you don't need to be skilled in any kind of flower arranging to do this at all. After everything was nearly complete, I decided that it was time to start decorating my Yule tree. So I leisurely potted around in front of the fire and one by one thoughtfully placed them on the tree, thinking about what they represented. And it really felt so much more meaningful. After I had completed this, I looked at the tree and decided it really needed one more thing, a cranberry garland. And this was going to be the real thing from real cranberries, something I had never done before. I used some thin elastic and a large needle, tied a loop knot at the end of a long piece of string and simply started threading. Cranberry gardens were traditionally made to go outside on the fir trees to feed the birds and the animals during the winter and that is exactly what I'll be doing over Yule. And the colour red is often seen during Yule as it helped to lift and brighten spirits to remember the warmth and energy that lies within us even though it is a time of hibernation. The garland overall took about 30 minutes to make and when I was done I knotted it and then wrapped this beautiful gleaming jeweled garland around the tree and it was the finishing touch it needed. Although I had just one more idea up my sleeve and it starts with this beautiful bauble. So I decided to take this to my altar and this is actually a trinket decoration and I wanted to turn this into a gratitude bottle to give thanks and show nature how much I appreciated it. I placed a little bit of each spice and evergreen that I had been working with and there was one more thing a letter, or rather an ode, and this is an ode to the fir trees. When we look around in autumn, 
you see the trees letting go. But amongst these fallen leaves, something stands out that is quite the contrary. It stands out in the forest, tall and proud, and shines out with its bright apparel. This something is a fir tree, a tree that never sheds, an evergreen that has the strength to battle all seasons. The fir trees are the warriors of the forest, and they bear witness to it all. Even the hardships of the gusty winds will only simply sway them to and throw. In spring, the rain may too look unsettling as it pours down and drones. But after the rain stops, it's the time of cleanse and rejuvenation, and the brightest colours will be shown. A heatwave in summer may drain the tree dry, and it will struggle to thrive, but the roots will only grow deeper and stronger to help it survive. In autumn, when the first frosts are upon us, the tree shows no signs of battle, and even when it snows, it gently sits on top and there are no cracks to spackle. Now winter is here again, and you still stand bright and tall, and because of this I say thank you for your power and strength you give to all. What I love most about learning about Yule is that everything you place upon this tree, every colour, symbol and piece of nature matter. And through the power of the cone-shaped fir tree, it will point all of this energy towards the sun and then in return it will protect us, our homes and our loved ones. Thank you so much for watching Enchanted Ones. Please let me know what was your favourite below. And if you are wondering why I hadn't made the topper for my tree yet, well, join me live on Sunday the 12th of December at 4pm GMT to craft one more with me. I will leave what you need in the description box below. I look forward to seeing you all then. All my love this Yule, Arlowen.